What we're going to do in this uh, hopefully short session is to talk about uh, fatigue failure. We've looked at tension and compression failures and both of those have been for a static load, a fixed load. Not one that's varying over time uh, such that like for instance if you take a paper clip, clip and bend it back and forth in just a few cycles it will break. That's low cycle fatigue. <clears throat> We're going to be interested in trying to make our structures such that they last a very long time, many, many cycles before they fail. So in order to do that, what we do, and I have been doing for uh, well over a century, is looking at, for instance, how the uh, stresses affect the life of a component. So we just take a simple specimen, like in this case a round uh, tension specimen, but instead of just doing it uh, with just a tension load, we apply a tension stress and then we apply a compression st stress in a nice cyclic manner as we have shown down here. So over time, we take and we start out at zero and then we go up to our maximum value and then back down to our minimum value and we have a zero mean stress. Oops. But we have what's called an alternating stress. That's our max and um, minimum uh, alternating. That is in fact our tensile and compressive stress that we're applying many uh, times. Now you can do this in a large a tensile compressive uh, machine and apply the load back you know very quickly back and forth and back and forth until it fails. A uh, very classical method is is to take a member uh, a specimen like this that has a very specific uh, specimen shape to it that's uh, been uh, approved by ASTM standards. Uh, I think that's American Testing and Materials Standards. And what we do is we take and we put it in a machine like this. This one's by uh, Instron. And uh, we have a fixed weight hi hanging here off in this specimen. What we have right here is the motor that is turning this grip which is attached to this end here. And then we got a rotate and so that rotates the specimen and this also is another grip and it's just a bearing over here on this side. We turn on this motor and start turning it and we count the number of clicks and other revolutions and that's all we have over here on the left side. When this breaks then we know how many revolutions that has taken. What these weights do down here is they actually bend this specimen just a little bit. So we start off with a really large load and what will happen is it will only take a few cycles before it breaks. Then we take a smaller load and a smaller load and we make many uh, tests on this. At about the, they say they can go up to 10,000 RPM. That might take a full week before a specimen breaks. So that's why we have the counter over here on the left hand side. When it breaks in the middle of the night, nobody has to be there. You know how many revolutions it made. So now what do we do with that? Here's uh, some classical data that was uh, done by uh, the predecessor of NASA and they did lots and lots of testing. So what you see here is the fatigue life, the number of cycles until it fails. This is called an SN curve or diagram. The N is the number of cycles to failure and the S is the strength or the S sub A that causes it to fail. The alternating stress that causes it to fail. So we have a logarithmic scale down here in the bottom 
And this happens to be for a material that is 4130 steel. And you get different curves for different steels, different steels with heat treatments, whether it's rough or it's polished, all kinds of stuff. So, as you can see here, this is one cycle. So this is at the ultimate strength. One cycle, it's gone. Now, we lessen the uh, load on that specimen, so we have a lower stress being applied. It'll last a little bit longer. And then we keep doing this, we keep doing this. And until we get to about this region approximately, we consider this to be low cycle fatigue and this being high cycle fatigue. And we're more interested in what's going on down in this region here. So we see that it comes down and then for a steel it pretty much flattens out and that's why I've got this extended out here. The, the little arrows pointing to the right that means it didn't fail so it's off scale. When they had it at this lower level down here it didn't fail at 10 to the 8th so and it had failed past that sometime where. And so you can s a lot of steels have this plat a plateau and we call that the endurance limit. Endurance limit. So the endurance limit here would be about 48 KSI. So what we'd be doing is with our sigma is equal to P over A, we would put that down in here for our sigma and uh, then we adjust our area such that will uh, for a given load will make sure that we have a, a life of 10 to the 8th cycles. So a lot of times the endurance limit is, is based on 10 to the 8th and sometimes on 10 to the 6th which is a million cycles. Um, so uh, the other thing I want to show you then is that when I come down here bring the oops I sure did that wrong there. When I have this and I bring it to the front here. Order order in the court. Bring it to the front. Oh, I didn't click on it. Dog got it. All this stuff, you know. Bring it to the front. Now this one's aluminum. And you see we're starting out here at a much lower stress, maybe seventy five uh, KSI and that will be the ultimate strength of this material but for aluminum it turns out that we're we are more inclined to say that it actually this doesn't have a plateau and it keeps on going down we'll still give a uh, uh, endurance limit but we understand that uh, if we want more than that, we're going to have to use more life than that. We're going to have to use even smaller stress. So we're down in here, you know, uh, on the order of, oh, so this is 10, 15, you know, like, it's, it's only like 17 KSI. It's pretty small where the ultimate strength of this thing is 75 KSI. So it really can limit, the fatigue can really limit uh, the size that we have to work with. It's going to have to be a lot bigger in order to withstand those small, uh, those loads. We have to have a larger uh, area in order to have a smaller stress. And so the fatigue part of this can way overwhelm the, the criteria on the yield strength. So in the next one, I'm going to show you what happens when our mean stress is not zero and how we handle that.